The love tale between Queen Charlotte and King George III is clarified in Netflix's Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton tale. The 2023 release of the Bridgerton offshoot series tells the story of the royal couple's early marriage and the transition into the Regency period, taking place in two distinct timelines. Although Netflix has not yet made an announcement, some fans are excited to see whether Queen Charlotte will have a second season. But since the streamer marketed the spin-off as a limited series that was a precursor, viewers might not want to hang their breath. On May 16, 2024, the first part of Bridgerton Season 3 will premiere, and on June 13, the second portion will follow. Even though narrator Julie Andrews states in her voiceover that Queen Charlotte is not a history lesson, the show is based on actual historical events. Many of the show's events were real, even though it dramatizes some aspects of Charlotte and George's lives. Are you unsure about what is real and what is made up? As we dissect some of the most significant historical moments from the program, continue reading. There are Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story spoilers ahead. Indeed. Queen Charlotte was derived straight from Margarita de Castro y Souza, the black branch of the Portuguese royal house, despite being born in Germany as a duke's daughter. Although her race cannot be verified completely, art historians who looked more closely at Charlotte's pictures after her death appear to think she was mixed race. According to The Guardian, painters of that era were generally pushed to minimize traits regarded undesirable, which, in the predominantly prejudiced culture of the day, frequently included those that were thought to be more authentically African. Nonetheless, a painter who was adamantly opposed to slavery, Sir Alan Ramsay, who married the niece of Lord Mansfield, a judge who decided the first case that ultimately resulted in the abolition of slavery in the British Empire, painted a number of portraits of Charlotte that some feel are closer to her true appearance. Indeed. George declared his intention to marry Charlotte in July of 1761. A month later, they signed a marriage contract, and on September 8, Barely hours after her arrival, they were married in London, according to the Royal Household website. Charlotte was 17 and George was 22 at the time. On September 22, later that month, they were coronated. No. Queen Victoria was among the first women to wear white on their wedding day, she was Charlotte's granddaughter. According to Vanity Fair, women at that period typically chose vibrant wedding gowns that they might wear again in the future. When it came to dressing actress India Ria Amartifio in a white wedding gown for the series, costume designer Lynn Paolo tells People, we cheated, because obviously, Queen Victoria started the white wedding gown, she wasn't wearing a white gown, so it was a major cheat for us. We therefore made some decisions based on the belief that they were appropriate. This is not what we should do. Indeed. The Prince of Wales, who would go on to become King George IV, was born in August 1762, less than a year after Charlotte and George were married. Together, they gave birth to 15 children, 13 of whom lived to adulthood. Indeed. According to London's Science Museum, George was the first British monarch to study science methodically, taking classes in physics, chemistry, astronomy, and mathematics. His strong interest in agriculture also earned him the moniker Farmer George. Paolo, the costume designer, told People that while doing research for the show, she discovered a great deal about the royal family. George was intelligent, she said. He was kind of mocked, dubbed Farmer George, but in reality, he was attempting to improve agriculture in England since he spoke so many languages and gave it his best. In order to help people learn to read, he founded the first public library. He's an interesting man. And it's really unfortunate that his only legacy is that of a bitter and lost man. Indeed. Particularly in the early years of her marriage to George, Charlotte didn't always agree with her mother-in-law. Much like in the series, it is believed that many of Charlotte's employees were appointed by Augusta, who then received reports from them regarding Charlotte's actions. No. Princess Augusta cultivated a strong relationship with her bedchamber attendant, Julianne von Schwellenberg, who accompanied her from Germany, as she appointed many of the women in Charlotte's inner circle. Similar to Lady Danbury from the Bridgerton series, Schwellenberg held significant authority in the royal court and was eventually appointed as the keeper of the robes. 
she was a close confidant of the Queen. Though Charlotte intervened on her behalf, George allegedly threatened to send her back to Germany as a result of her impudence. Indeed. George purchased Buckingham House for Charlotte in 1762, a year after their marriage, and it later became Buckingham Palace when the royal couple moved in. Although the royal couple's official abode was St. James's Palace, Buckingham House soon rose to the top of their list of favorites. According to Britain magazine, 14 out of their 15 children were born there. No. In real life, Charlotte received a Pomeranian dog as a companion, despite what is seen in the show. Harper's Bazaar claims that Phoebe and Mercury, two Pomeranians, were carried by Charlotte when she went to England to marry George. Later, as a result of her gifts of Pomeranians to other family members, her appreciation of the breed became a royal family tradition. After her husband, Prince Albert, passed away, Queen Victoria eventually bred her dogs so she would always have them by her side. Indeed. Charlotte and George, as noted on the Royal Household website, were connoisseurs of music and frequently had musicians perform for them. The eleventh son of the renowned composer Johann Sebastian Bach, Johann Christian Bach, was not only the Queen's music maestro, but she also had an eight-year-old Mozart perform for her. When Mozart's Opus 3 was released on January 18, 1765, it was dedicated to Charlotte. Indeed. The death of Princess Charlotte, the daughter of George and Charlotte's eldest son, George IV, in 1817 sparked a succession crisis for the royal family. The remainder of Charlotte and George's children were under tremendous pressure to produce a legal heir when she passed away in childbirth along with her stillborn boy. Princess Charlotte was their Princess Diana, as the British public at the time understood it, Queen Charlotte, a Bridgerton story costume designer Lynn Paolo told People, because she was carrying the lone heir apparent to the throne, her death, was disastrous for the royal family. A daughter of Edward had precedence in the line of succession, according to history, even if some of Charlotte and George's sons did welcome children. Edward was the eldest brother to do so. Alexandrina Victoria, the daughter of Edward and Princess Victoria, was born at Kensington Palace on May 24, 1819. Alexandrina Victoria would go on to become Queen Victoria, reigning from June 1837 to January 1901. Indeed. Throughout his reign, the monarch, dubbed the Mad King who lost America, fought mental illness twice, from 1788 to 1789 and again in 1801 earning him considerable recognition from his portrayal in Hamilton. George became permanently deranged in 1810, according to the Royal Household website, and was deemed mentally unfit to rule in the last decade of his reign. Consequently, starting in 1811, George IV, his eldest son, served as Prince Regent. While some historians today speculate that George III may have had bipolar illness, Others still think his mental instability was caused by a hereditary physical disorder known as porphyria. Newly made public records from 2017 provided insight into the famed king's health. There are documents in his own handwriting, where you can see him deteriorating into the illness, along with information from his doctors and his attendants explaining what's happening to him and the effect on his family, stated Karen Wolf. A history professor at the College of William and Mary and director of the Omohundro Institute of Early American History and Culture, 